What is going on, Jet fans? Matt O'Leary back with another video. The last mock draft Monday of the offseason. That makes me sad a little bit because I love doing these mock drafts every single Monday. It also gets me excited because that means the NFL draft is inching just that much closer. I am pumped up. We're going to be doing our live reactions on Thursday from the main event on Long Island, and you will see my reaction to each and every pick with the guys, Ryan and Green Bean. It's going to be an absolute blast. My guys, you ever lift a little too hard or just forget to apply your daily deodorant and get hit by a truckload of BO from all directions? Not great. Does that three-in-one shampoo leave you needing a second shower just a few hours after your first one? From the founders of Lumi, Mando Whole Body Deodorant, got it right here, is helping men conquer their odor in a new way. Formulated with mandelic acid, Mando has long-lasting 72-hour body control body odor control that actually stops odor before it even starts. The best part is you can put Mando everywhere. Pits, package, feet, skin folds, your back, your knees, everywhere. To top it off, Mando's cologne quality scents were created with men in mind. Pro tip, try their best-selling scent, Bourbon Leather. It's a game changer. That was my favorite one. You guys know how much I love bourbon. I talk about it on the show all the time. Once you experience fresher underarms, a fresher package, and fresher feet, you'll never go back. And I have a special offer for you. New customers get $5 off a starter pack with our exclusive code and link. Use my code O'Leary at shopmando.com. That's S-H-O-P-M-A-N-D-O dot com. Pick yourself, up, pick yourself up something nice. Might as well treat yourself. All right, this mock draft is going to be a predictive mock draft. Last week is what I would do. This week is what I think is going to happen in the NFL draft. So we'll go through, we'll talk through our different guys. And starting us off, round one, pick number 10, Romo Dunze out of Washington. Yes, I think Romo Dunze could make it to the New York Jets at pick number 10. Could they also trade up to pick number eight to land him? Yeah, I could see them being aggressive in doing that, but I don't think they're going to need to. The NFL draft is weird. Every single year, there are guys who are projected to go significantly higher than where they end up, and I think the board is going to break and the Jets are going to luck out and they'll get a skill position player fall in their lap. Odunze is six foot three, 212 pounds, and runs a 4-4-5 40-yard dash. He has 39-inch vertical. He can go up and attack the football. That's what I love about his game. He just goes up, snatches it out of the air. He's not afraid to go up and use his hands. Sometimes guys coming out of college, they're too much of a, a body catcher. They'll like trap the ball against their chest instead of going up and high-pointing the football and going to bring it in. He's also a better route runner than he's given credit for. Yes, at his size, like that's not he's not the same route runner as a Malik Neighbors or Marvin Harrison Jr., but he is a better route runner than I think he gets credit for. And he's really good at finding the soft spots of the zone. Good vertical receiver would be an immediate upgrade to this Jets wide receiver room. And I feel like the Jets are going to go weapon. I, I think that's something that they're going to look to do. And I think Odunze is there for them over Brock Bowers, and that's going to be the pick for them. Round three, pick 72. Give me Dominic Pooney, offensive tackle out of Kansas. He is a versatile offensive lineman, can play both tackle and guard. I think the Jets will value his versatility. He's a little bit on the smaller side for an offensive line prospect, which is probably a reason why he's a third round pick and not closer to a first round pick at six foot five, 313 pounds at Kansas. He did play left tackle this past year, year prior. He played left guard. He was a great run blocker and plays with very good play strength. To me, that sounds exactly what the Jets have been looking for with their offensive linemen in the Joe Douglas era with their retool of the offensive line this offseason. They bought they brought in a lot of guys who are dominant run blockers who play very strong and have a little bit of a nastiness to their game. And I think that's a way to describe Dominic Pooney and what he's been able to do. Round four, pick 111. Give me Michael Pratt, quarterback out of Tulane. 
Yes, he was in my what I would do, and I think he's also going to fit into what the Jets actually do. Michael Pratt and Jordan Travis are the two most popular names for the New York Jets in the NFL draft for developmental quarterback. Pratt is six foot three, 220 pounds. Not the biggest arm, but he has good touch on the football. He's a relatively accurate passer. I like his play in the pocket. He has very good legs. He's fast, and he's not someone who's going to bail out on the pocket if the pressure is coming in around him. He's willing to step up in the pocket and make some plays, not only with his legs and tucking and running, but like keeping his eyes downfield and being able to step up in the pocket and make throws. Uh, the Jets met with him this offseason, which I like to go through and see, like, okay, who do the Jets meet with? Is there a connection here? And Pratt is someone that they did that with. They saw him at the Senior Bowl. Would not surprise me at all if the Jets go that route um, in round four. Round four, the second selection in the fourth round. I'm going to take Mason Smith, interior defensive lineman out of LSU. Another guy that the Jets just recently met with. He's ranked 12th on Bruce Feldman's freak list. So he is just an unbelievable athlete. Great athleticism, high motor guy. That screams Robert Sala day three crush, doesn't it? Someone that Robert Sala just absolutely loves and says, yeah, he's a little bit raw, but I can get something out of him as a pass rusher. Interior defensive line, by the way, sneaky need for this New York Jets team. Yes, you have Quinn and Williams locked up long term. You signed Leaky Foto, run stopping interior player on a one year deal. Deal Javon Kinlaw one year left. Solomon Thomas one year left uh, on his contract. I I think that they would like to add someone on the interior defensive line on day three. I'm not saying you spend one of your first two picks on him. But somewhere in the fourth or sixth round would not shock me at all to see the Jets add on the interior. And Mason Smith seems to fit the bill for what the Jets like. He's a little bit raw, has some injury concern. Sounds like a New York Jet to me. Okay, round six, pick 185. Give me Dominic Hampton, a safety out of Washington. He is six foot two, 215 pounds. The Jets need help at safety. Uh, they need to add more at the position. They brought back Ashton Davis, which was something that excited me. Uh, but Dominique Hampton is someone that I think would make sense for the Jets. He's fast, which the Jets value that at corner and safety, 4-5, 140 speed. He has really good ball skills, which the Jets don't really have guys who take away the football a whole lot. He's an explosive athlete, but sometimes had tendencies of getting exposed in some coverage. So he's a sixth rounder, guys. You know These prospects aren't going to be perfect even in the early rounds but as you get into the late rounds of the draft you're looking to you know bank on some traits 921 RAS score this is the Joe Douglas I'm going to take an athletic defensive back on day 3 of the NFL draft and hope it works now the Jets also have a little bit of an issue right so they have Zach Wilson on the roster right now and they don't want him on the roster especially after they're going to draft a developmental quarterback in the fourth round in Michael Pratt. So what do you do with Zach Wilson? Well, I have the Jets trading both of their sevens, so 256 and 257, along with Zach Wilson to the Denver Broncos for pick number 203. The Denver Broncos quarterback room is absolutely abysmal this year. And Sean Payton at one point really liked Zach Wilson. When Zach was coming out of college, that was someone that ranked very, very highly on his board. So the Jets packaged the last two picks of the draft and Zach Wilson to move themselves up like 53 spots. So they jump up about a round and a half. I know it's only, you know, it's from the two late sevenths to a sixth, but you go up a really long way, which is exciting. So uh, the Jets do that. They move on from Zach Wilson. Sorry, Zach Wilson fans. I think it's just it's just over. Uh, and with the round six pick number 203, the Jets are going to take Elijah Jones, cornerback out of Boston College. Now, how could you possibly take corner, Matt? Why would you do it? I'm going to explain. This isn't what I would do. This is what I think the Jets are going to do. And they love taking defensive backs and projects on day three. Elijah Jones, though, interesting. Six foot two, insanely long and lanky. 180, only 185 pounds. So really long, lanky. Reminds you of like just looking at, not play-wise. Please don't get this confused by play-wise, but just looking-wise. 
Kind of looks like Sauce Gardner, the long and lanky at 6'2", 185. He's an outside corner, incredible speed, 4'4", 4, 4, 4 speed, which is well above average. Another defensive back with really good ball skills. He wasn't as effective in man coverage, and some view him as a little bit too slender, which again is why he's picked 203 in this draft. But the Jets, number one, as I said, they probably could use some corner depth because they lost Bryce Hall last year. But Elijah Jones, maybe he's a developmental guy. There's a very real chance that the Jets could lose an outside corner in DJ Reed after this season. Not rooting for that to happen. I would love to bring DJ Reed back. I think he is a fantastic running mate for Sauce Gardner. But maybe the Jets will be looking to the future and try to land the potential replacement or at least some depth on this roster, assuming that DJ Reed maybe isn't back in 2025, which would be a tough pill to swallow. I love me some DJ Reed. I'd be very happy if the Jets extended him, but there's a possibility maybe they only can choose between one of DJ Reed and Michael Carter, uh, and they end up going with the slot corner. So that's my mock draft. Just to recap it once more, pick number 10, Rome Odunze. I have him for the Jets at pick 10. Dominic Pooney, offensive tackle out of Kansas at 72. Uh, in the fourth round, Michael Pratt, quarterback out of Tulane. Then Mason Smith, interior player out of LSU. Pick 185, uh, I have Dominic Hampton, safety out of Washington. And then closing out the draft, Elijah Jones, cornerback out of Boston College. Let me know your thoughts down below. I'm Matt. Catch you next time.